Well, yes, 20 years is a long time. My, my hair was quite a different color <laughs> back when John and I started this adventure with 15. Uh, I now spend a lot of money to dye it gray uh, on, on a regular basis. Uh, at, at the moment, I've, over, the, over much of the past 20 years, I've worked primarily as a screenwriter. Uh, I'd actually been a stage playwright, more or less, prior to about the time that I started working on, on 15. I'd done some television work, but hadn't really done a whole lot of it. Uh, 15 was, for me, the beginning of, a, of, a, of an odyssey into the screen world, the TV world which occupied much of the last two decades. Uh, quite recently, actually, I've uh, published my first novel, so that's, that's a new kind of adventure for me. So at the moment, I'm, I'm spending more of my time actually writing fiction uh, than I am writing for television, although I still consider myself, I suppose, first and foremost a screenwriter. That's, you know, that's been, as it were, my day job uh, for, for lo these many long years, and I've had a wonderful, wonderful time with it. Great. Um, wherever you might want to go in recalling the actual show, the work on the show, best moments, worst moments, uh, humorous moments. Uh. Well, I, I vividly recall how the whole adventure started for me. I was, uh, you know, it was back in, in I guess, around 1990. Um, and those were the days when we still had telephone answering machines as opposed to voicemail and mobile telephones. Uh, and I returned home to my apartment one afternoon. I saw a little beeping light uh, on the television answer, uh, telephone answering machine. Um, and it was a telephone call from a man named John Binkley, uh, who spoke with an American accent, uh, introduced himself as a, as a television producer uh, from Texas, who was in town uh, looking to hire a writer to do a teen soap, uh, write a teen soap uh, that he was doing with Nickelodeon, and was I interested in talking? And of course, I was totally interested in talking. It sounded like a wonderful kind of situation. I was, I was very curious to meet him. So I called back, and we arranged a time, and I think it was, it was the next morning, I guess. John was only in town in Vancouver for a matter of a couple of days. And I began to discover that John does everything at this rate of speed. I mean, John's never anywhere for protracted periods of time. John works very intensively, uh, very expeditiously, and very efficiently. So the next morning, we were meet, to meet at the Sylvia Hotel, as I recall, beautiful hotel down uh, in the west end of Vancouver, right on the bay. Uh, and we got together, I guess it was, I don't know, it was 8.30 in the morning or so, uh, and I walked into the restaurant area, sort of looking vaguely around, uh, and this man, this brisk man, came walking very quickly across the room, uh, extended his hand, you know, took my hand in a very firm handshake, which I uh, appreciated greatly. My father always taught me uh, that a man must have a firm hand clasp. And we sat down and we talked about this and that for, I, I would think, probably about half an hour. Uh, about the way I would see the show going and the way I would approach the process and some of the ideas I ha might have in general. Uh, and I went back home and I thought to myself, well, okay, uh, with luck, I'll hear back in, you know, in, in, in a few weeks' time, in the fullness of time, uh, and I'll find out what's, what, what's on, on John's mind and if there's a possibility of going you know, for a callback interview to a, to a subsequent round. Um, and lo and behold, I got a call back from John, I think about two hours later, it seems to me, uh, saying, yes, I've decided I, I, I want to go with you. Uh, let's, let's get the deal done, and how soon can you start writing? Uh, and at this point, I was really thinking, you know, being a Canadian, uh, we're used to spending the first several weeks of the process analyzing all the possible ways it could go wrong before we decide we're even going to commit to this. Uh, and working with John, it, it was a, an introduction to, to an American way of doing things, which was full of tremendous optimism and tremendous self-confidence uh, and, and a tremendous willingness to trust in the instincts and simply to go with creative instincts. And I asked John afterwards, you know, why he decided to hire me as opposed to the other writers he'd talked to. And he said, well, it, it felt right. And I thought, well, you know, thank God it felt right. It became, it became step one. In a you long wrote the best teen dialogue <laughs> I've ever seen. Don't be so modest. Well, you're, yeah, I told you you were the only one who could write dialogue that sounded like John Hughes that I'd ever heard. Well, other than John Hughes. You're and very kind. I had read your your one of your novels about adolescence. That's that's right. I, yes, I did show you. And, and I, I, <laughs> you're giving novel. me way too much intuitive. Well, but. <laughs> <laughs> but it was but it was it was wonderful. It was a wonderful first expo exposure to John. It was a wonderful way to get the process going. Um, and then we met again, of course, in which I discovered that, as always in 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 the TV world, there's always, I guess, in every walk of life, there's always the good news, and then there was the bad news. Uh, the good news was uh, we I was hired. We were going to go ahead. We obviously connected in a really big way creatively. That was wonderful news. The bad news was it's as I as I recall, I think it was about two months. 
uh, to write the entire first season of 15, starting from scratch, starting from John presenting some ideas for characters, uh, which when I when I looked at it, looked at it, I thought to myself, you know, my gosh, uh, you know, the, the human life isn't, isn't able to tolerate this kind of pace. Uh, but it actually worked out quite extraordinarily well. And you have to spell out those, as you did in that period, a Bible and the episodic break, scene by scene breakdowns. Yeah. We, and the dog. The do yeah, it was. It was, and it was a short. We had a short fuse. It wasn't only uh, by choice. No, the, absolutely. The studio was booked. We were all set to go. Yep. The, net, the network already had. I, I don't, that I, was I, the bad news, wasn't it? You <laughs> didn't know that was coming in. It was awfully quick. So yeah, we we we, we met and had dinner. And spent a couple of hours, well, several hours, I guess, over dinner and some drinks talking about, about characters. And John had done a really great job of mapping out an overall character map of the kinds of characters he wanted to inhabit the different slots in, in the show. Which, of course, as I, come to, as I came to discover when I did more work uh, on 15 and also soaps in general, that's the absolute key to getting a soap. Going. And I, I give those children in the focus groups, the 13 to 15 year olds, which I said in in, in earlier in my interview, uh, yeah. credit, and I've written it too, that, that, that they came up with those ideas, which I shared with you. I called them, maybe, but I, yeah, that was, yeah. we were lucky to have them as the touchstone or the, the catalyst or whatever to throw into your magic kingdom <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> to it, then create the show. It was, you know, it was, it was tremendous, a tremendous resource because, I mean, because that's the thing. I mean, in terms of creating any television show, you're not looking to create something that'll create a half an hour or an hour or two hours of good drama. What you're looking to create is something that will go on for season after season after season. I mean, you're looking at ideally 65 episodes worth yeah. of drama, and you need to position those characters in such a way that they will generate that in terms of their interaction. Uh, and in a soap, it's all the more essential because all you have is character. Yeah. You don't have car chases. I mean, you don't have helicopters. Uh, you don't have forensic special effects. Uh, you know, you don't have uh, people rappelling down from cliff tops. You, you know, you don't have uh, chases on, on on ski hills. You have nothing like that going on. There's no place to hide. All you've got is the characters and the interaction of the characters. And the characters need to be, need to be positioned in such a way that they will sustain that interaction in a dynamic and one hopes an interesting way. Uh, so, so that was in that was the first stage of the process was simply fleshing out the characters, and then from there. Uh, I'd never worked, as I say, in soap before, uh, but what John explained to me, John mapped out the process he wanted, which, which worked a treat, and I discovered, you know, years later, that's, that's very much the, the same process uh, that's used in the world of, uh, of, of adult uh, daytime television as well, uh, that you start with a long story, and in the case of 13 half-hour episodes, episodes it's, if, if memory serves, I think it was about a 50-page document, and basically the, the novella version of the stories, uh, the storylines that would inhabit the first season. Uh, and then it was a case of breaking those down into 13 episode outlines. Uh, those were about 10 or 11 page documents, mapping down scene by scene what would happen over the course of the, each episode, uh, which for me began with, with, with one of the most fun parts of the entire process, which was basically tacking up paper all over my walls, all over the basement, uh, and just jotting ideas and jotting possible scenes on sheets of paper and moving them around. This was in before, this was, you know, 1990, before the days in which computers had, you know, had, had taken a hold on the psyche in the way they've done now. So my whole basement was filled up with these sheets of paper that I was moving around. And out of those, I wrote the, the outlines. Uh, and then after that, it was a process of simply writing, uh, writing the episode dialogue itself, which in a way was the, it really was the easiest part of the process, or at least it was the most stress-free, or the, well, stress-free is not the word to use in, in high-speed television. It was the part of the process which involved less stress than any of the others, just because once you've, uh, as a screenwriter working for television, once you've locked down the characters and locked down the structure of the episode, that's the stage at which you can get killed in a terrible bus accident if things go wrong. I mean, once you've locked that down, uh, then writing the dialogue, there's certainly ways to get egg on your face, and there's certainly ways to stub your toe, but the horrors of a, you know, a head-on bus, bus crash uh, you know, are, are much diminished by the time, by the time you're in